The year was 1763, and the Treaty of Paris had just been signed, marking the end of the French and Indian War. The British emerged victorious, but it was a victory that would soon lead to a new battle, this time with their own colonies. The British government, facing a large debt from the war, decided to impose taxes on the colonies to recoup their losses. The first of these taxes, the Quartering Acts, imposed in 1765 required the colonies to provide housing and supplies for British troops. Imagine being a colonist who had just fought alongside the British to secure their land, only to be told that they now had to open their homes and share their resources with the very soldiers who were supposed to protect them. The colonists were furious. They felt that their rights were being trampled on and that they were being treated like subjects rather than citizens. The following year, the Stamp Act was passed, placing a tax on printed materials in the colonies. This sparked widespread protests and boycotts, with colonists refusing to pay the tax and boycotting British goods. The phrase, taxation without representation, became a rallying cry for the colonists, who felt that they were being unfairly taxed without having a say in how their government was run. Despite this resistance, the British government remained steadfast in its belief that it had the right to tax the colonies. In 1766, they repealed the Stamp Act but passed the Declaratory Act, which stated that Britain had complete authority over the colony. Talk about adding insult to injury. In the years leading up to the Revolutionary War, one of the most influential figures in the revolutionary cause was Thomas Paine and his publication of Common Sense. Published in 1776, Paine's pamphlet made the case for American independence from Britain and argued that a government based on the principles of liberty and equality was the only just form of government. He used powerful and persuasive language, making complex political ideas accessible to the common people and his arguments helped to mobilize support for the revolutionary cause. The colonists' discontent with British rule continued to simmer as more and more taxes were imposed on them. In 1767, the Townshend Acts were passed, which placed taxes on imported goods such as glass, paint, and tea. The colonists were outraged, and they decided to take matters into their own hands. They began to organize and resist British rule through various means, including boycotts of British goods. The Sons of Liberty, a group of patriot activists, played a significant role in organizing and enforcing these boycotts. They even formed an enforcing committee whose job was to make sure that the boycotts were being followed through. They also helped to mobilize support for the revolutionary cause by spreading propaganda and organizing protests. And let's not forget the doctors who were telling people that English tea was bad for their health, helping to discourage the colonists from buying and drinking British tea. One of the most notable and tragic incident that further inflamed tensions between colonists and the British government was the Boston Massacre of 1770. On March 5th, British soldiers stationed in Boston killed five colonists during a confrontation with a crowd of angry citizens. The incident further inflamed tensions between the colonists and the British government, and it served as a rallying cry for the revolutionary cause. But the final straw came in 1773, when the Tea Act was passed. This law granted the British East India Company a monopoly on tea sales in the colonies. The colonists who had grown accustomed to drinking their tea without taxes were furious, and thus the famous Boston Tea Party occurred. On December 16, a group of colonists led by the Sons of Liberty boarded three ships in Boston Harbor and dumped 342 chests of tea into the water. It was a bold and daring act of defiance, and it served as a clear message to the British government that the colonists would not be pushed around. Enraged by the colonists' audacity, the British government passed the Coercive Acts, also known as the Intolerable Acts, in 1774. These laws included the closure of Boston Harbor and the Quartering Act, and were meant to punish the colonists for their rebellion. But the colonists were not so easily cowed. In 1774, they held the first Continental Congress in Philadelphia, where representatives from the colonies met to discuss a unified response to the Coercive Act. They stood together, united in their determination to resist British rule and fight for their rights as citizens. The following year, on April 19, 1775, the Revolutionary War began with the famous shot hard round the world. British troops, under orders to confiscate the colonists' stockpile of weapons, marched towards Lexington and Concord in Massachusetts. On their way, they were met by a group of local militia who were ready to defend their rights and their arms. The militia was warned about the Redcoats' arrival by Paul Revere, who rode through the night shouting the British are coming. 
A shot was fired, and it was the signal for the start of the battle. The war between the British troops and the local militia began, and it was the first armed conflict of the Revolutionary War. This event was significant because it was the first time that the colonists had taken up arms against the British, and it marked the beginning of the war for independence. News of the skirmish at Lexington and Concord quickly spread throughout the colonies, and soon, thousands of men were joining the fight against the British. The Second Continental Congress was held in Philadelphia, where George Washington was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. And on July 4, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was adopted, which declared the colonies independence from British rule. The document, written primarily by Thomas Jefferson, outlined the colonies' grievances against King George III and declared that the 13 American colonies were now independent states, no longer under British rule. The Declaration of Independence was a bold and powerful statement, and it served as a rallying cry for the revolutionary cause. It was a clear and undeniable declaration of the colonists' desire for freedom and their determination to fight for it. The Declaration of Independence was not only a crucial turning point in the Revolutionary War, but also a cornerstone of American history and a symbol of freedom for people around the world. Some of the most notable quotes from the Declaration of Independence include, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos.